yung mga nasa mga kalinya ho natin dyan. Tulad ng sinabi ko ho kanina, uh, sana po wala na po magsasabi ng 2021, I'm ready for you. Kasi last year may nagsabi ho niyan, kaya nagkaloko-loko yung taon. Joke lang po. So, <laughs> ayan. So let me just read to you po before we start our worship to na, uh, this morning. Psalms 105 verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing praises to Him. Tell of all His wonderf- wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that He has done, His miracles, and the judgments He uttered. So this morning po, ang paalala sa atin ng Bible is to give thanks to the Lord. This new year, this um, first Sunday of 2021, let us give thanks to the Lord. Let us sing praises to Him. Umawit po tayo and glory in His name. And seek the Lord. Hanapin natin ang Panginoon and His strength. And in verse 5, what, it's a beautiful reminder for this new year. Remember the wondrous works that He has done. So, balikan, alalahanin natin anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa 2020. No? Sabi doon, His miracles and the judgments He uttered. So, sa lahat ng magagandang nangyari, let us remember that. And even sa lahat ng mga pangit na nangyari, the judgments and the trials, let us also remember them. And let us thank God because Whatever happens this year, He is a sovereign God. He is in control and this life of ours is in His hands. Kaya, let's find reasons to thank the Lord. No? So let us thank and worship God this morning. Tumayo po tayong lahat. And let us, um, let us worship the Lord today. Father, once again, we thank You. We worship Your holy name. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. We give you thanks and praise, O God. Lord, in this new year, 2021, in this first Sunday of the year, Lord, we come to you to give thanks and praises, O God. We look back and we remember the year that has passed, 2020. We thank you for all the miracles, all the breakthroughs, all the good things that happened. And Lord, we still thank you for all the challenges and all the judgment and trials that happened. In the good or in bad, you are God. You are God, sovereign above any situation. And as we face the new year, O God, whatever, it is, whatever is in store, Lord, we just lift everything and we trust that you are the sovereign one at ikaw ang may hawak ng lahat ng mangyayari, Panginoon. We trust you and we find reasons, Lord, to give thanks to you. Thank you, Lord God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Balakpakan natin na Panginoon. Let's worship the Lord. Let's sing this song. Thank you, Lord. I come before you today And there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord For all you've given to me For all the blessings that I cannot see Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I'll bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank 
you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've done in my life. For all you've done in my life. You took my darkness. You took my darkness and gave me a light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart. Come on. With a song of praise. With an outstretched arm. I'll bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I'll bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank the Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you continually, O God, for all you've done and for all you're going to do. We give you thanks, O God. Lord, create in us a thankful heart today. He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given.
as his given Jesus Christ, his son. And now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, last time and now and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us Yes, oh God, come on, let's give thanks to our God. Stand in the midst of a multitude of those from every tribe and tongue. We are your people, redeemed by your blood, rescued from death by your love. There are no words. Good enough to thank you. There are no words to express my praise. Come on, church. But I will lift up my voice. Lift your voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue and every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Sing it, ladies. Lord, we I stand. stand by All the ladies sing. Cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, we are your children, called by your name. Humbly we bow when we pray. Release your power to work in us and through us Till we are changed to be more like you Then all the nations will see your glory revealed And worship you Sing hallelujah 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia to the Lamb. Alleluia, Alleluia, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue and every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Every knee, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that you are Lord of all. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. In every tongue, and every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand in every tongue, in every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Oh, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ. Lamb of God. Yes, God. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, the Son of God. We worship you. Son of the living God, Jesus. Son of David, Son of God. We worship you, Jesus. You're our King, Lord. Be glorified, be honored, O God. We worship you, Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy is your name, O God. We continue to worship you, Lord. May our worship continue not just in our singing, but in the preaching of your word. We thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Eman, and the rest of the worship team. Thank you for serving his church this first Sunday for the year 2020. Thank you for all the marshals and the ushers. Uh, thank you for all the pastoral staff, even the one who's handling our sound uh, video team. Thank you for your lives. Maraming maraming salamat po sa buhay nyo, sa pagilingkod sa Panginoon. So, Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you're happy today because it's a happy new year. Praise the Lord. Are you glad you're in the house of the Lord? Sa kauna-unahang linggo ho ng taong 2021, we are in the house of the Lord. I apologize for not joining with you sa start po ng ating praise and worship kanina sa third worship service because this is my third preaching for today. So, nire-reserve ko yung, yung boses ko po um, sa, para makaabot dito sa third worship service. At meron pa akong uh, boses na magagamit para sa kwentuhan ng aking apo mamaya. <laughs> okay, so, uh, I entitled my sermon today, The Future or Failure of Our Family. A recent survey was held Actually, last year, uh, mid last year, a survey was held in America about the rate of divorce. And the finding was and is very staggering. 
73% of marriages in America ends up in divorce. We're not talking about 50% or 60%, but we're talking about 73% of marriages in America ends in divorce. May top 10 po silang nilist according to the survey, but I will just mention the three. The first in their list, on their list, kung bakit po nagkakaroon ng divorce is sex. No? Maaring infidelity, maaring uh, immorality, maaring um, incompatibility, or neglect of intimacy, or a lot of reasons about sex. Pangalawang reason ba't po naghihulay raw mag-asawa sa Amerika at nagdi-divorce is because of money. Either mukhang pera si lalaki, o mukhang pera si babae, or hindi sila magkasundon how to use their money. And the third reason is in-laws. Yung mga in-laws sila, mga father and mother in-laws nila ay naging, mangi, naging maging mother and father outlaws. Kaya every time po ako nagkakasal, kinoconsider po namin sa counseling yung mga in-laws. Kasi whether you like it or not, yung pinakasalan mong tao o yung pakakasalan mong tao, package deal po yan. Pinakasalan mo yung buong pamilya po niyan. So that should be considered as you enter to what the Bible calls marriage. Now, I would like to respect this survey, and I respect this survey. But for me, the number one reason why marriage fails is because a couple fails to understand God's biblical design or God's biblical mandate for marriage. And it ripples even to their parenting, even to their children. And it affects the whole family. That's why we should never lose sight to look at our family in the lens of the scriptures. Every time we go beyond or we don't follow the scriptures, don't expect God to bless your marriage and even to bless your family. Because God's blessing flows only through the path of His word. Sa kanyang salita lamang. So this morning, I would like to discuss to you about the future or failure of our family. And it is very close to our heart. And I hope and pray that you will have a heart that is willing to learn, a heart that is submissive to His Word. Shall we all arise? Tayo po ito mayo. And let's open our Bible to the book of Colossians chapter 3. I hope you have your Bibles with you. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, starting verse 18. And we'll end in verse 21. It says, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provo provoke your children lest they become discouraged. We can all be seated now. May the Lord continue to bless His word. Now, as we go on studying our main text in Colossians chapter 3, let me give you a quick background of the book of Colossians. No? Ang book of Colossians po, sinulat po ni Paul sa mga kapatiran sa Colossus. And in, 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 that, in that area, during that time, ay hindi po pinagbabawal ang pag-worship kay Jesus. Actually, pwede nilang i-worship si Jesus. As long na i-worship din nila, yung ibang mga Roman gods and Roman goddesses. Pero in chapters 1 and 2, Paul emphasizes to the church in Colossae that, hey, that is a false teaching. You don't believe that because there's only one God, there's only one Lord, and there's only one true living God. And that is Jesus Christ. Yun po ang emphasis ni Paul sa chapters 1 and 2. Kaya sinulat na rin ho, pagdating po ng chapter 2, verse 9, for in Christ... All the fullness of the deity lives in the bodily form. Sinundan niya po sa verse 10, And you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head of every power and authority. So sinasabi ho ni Paul, don't believe their culture. These Roman gods and goddesses are nothing. They're just myth. They're just made up of some uh, mind of some people. But the true living God is no one else but Jesus Christ. Kaya pagdating po sa chapter 3, ito po ang sinabi ni Paul, verse 1, 
sa mga kapatiran po natin sa Colossus yung kapanahonan na yon. Sabi niya, since then, you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So wag niyo paniwalaan yung mga ibang jos ng just just na mga jos ng Romans o mga josa ng mga Rom, Romans paniwalaan niyo that there's only one God and that is Jesus Christ. Siya yung nagborn again sa inyo. Siya yung niligtas kayo. Siya yung nabuhay na maguli at nangako na kayo ibubuhayng muli. At dahil kayo ay nasa Panginoon na, ang sabi po ni Pablo, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Sinasabi ho ni Paul dito, let your minds be preoccupied with Christ. Dahil siya yung nagligtas sa inyo. Siya yung naging kaligtasan natin. Sabi niya, let your minds be preoccupied with Christ and with Christ alone. Okay? So ano pong tinuturo dito ni Paul sa atin? Una, we have a new relationship with God. Ngayong niligtas ka ng Panginoon, kayo ay meron ng bagong relasyon sa Diyos. Dati kilala nyo ang Diyos, pero wala kayong ugnayan, wala kayong relasyon sa Diyos. Ngayon, meron na tayong bagong ugnayan sa Diyos. Meron na tayong bagong relasyon sa Diyos. Kaya sabi ho ng Bible, no? we are already a new creature, the old has gone, and the new has come. And we became His children only by the merit of His election. Hindi ka karapat-dapat na piliin ng Diyos, patawarin ng Diyos, gawaran ng kaligtasan, pero pinili ka niya. Hindi dahil cute ka, hindi dahil karapat-dapat ka, kundi dahil ikaw ay makasalanan. Ang tanging partisipasyon natin sa ating kaligtasan po ay walang iba kundi ang ating kasalanan. Kung bakit tayo napalapit sa Diyos, nakita natin ang kabanalan niya, nakita natin ang karumihan natin, at nakita natin ang kailangan po natin tagapagligtas, lahat po yung galaw ng Diyos. And only through the merit of His Election. So meron tayong bagong relasyon sa Diyos. Pangalawa, dahil meron kang bagong relasyon sa Diyos, no? we also have a new humanity. Iba ka na dapat. The old has gone. The new has come. Listen carefully ho. Kung totoo ang paggalaw ng Diyos sa buhay mo, kung totoo ang Ebanghelyo ni Kristo na naghari sa buhay mo, listen carefully, hindi mo kayang pigilan ang pagbabago ng Diyos. Kasi kung kaya mong pigilan ang galaw at pagbabago ng Diyos sa buhay mo, nangangahulugan lamang na mas makapangyarihan ka kesa sa Diyos. Now, listen to this. No? Kaya nga po sa Paulin Epistles, he emphasizes that divine change is the efficacy of God's regeneration in the heart of men. So yung pagbabago na galaw ng Diyos ay bunga lamang ng nang walang makipipigil na kapangyarihan ng Diyos simulang naghari siya sa iyo. Kaya isang katibayan ho na tayo nga po ay ligtas ay binabago po tayo ng Diyos dahan-dahan. Ang tawag po doon ay sanctification. Na wala hong na born again tas naging perfecto. Wala hong ganun. No, lahat po tayo nag struggle pa. May mga struggle pa sa kasalanan. May mga challenges tayo na sa pagsunod sa kalooban ng Diyos. Lahat po tayo dumaraan doon. Pati po itong taong to, itong uod na ito na nagsasalita sa inyo. Lahat po tayo dumadaan po doon. Pero nagbabago po tayo. Patungo po tayo doon sa perfection. Though we cannot live a perfect life, yet we are going through perfection when that day comes, when Jesus Christ comes back. Again, sabi nga ni Pastor Jeff, when God works, no one can stop it for He is sovereign. What He works, He will complete it for He is faithful. I'll say it once again. No, when God works, no one can stop it for He is sovereign. What He works, He will complete it for He is faithful. Ganito rin po ang confidence ni Paul sa Philippians 1.6. Sabi niya sa mga kapatiran, sa mga taga-Pilipo, sabi niya, I am confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of His return. Ako po bilang ama, bilang mister, bilang kapatid, bilang kapatiran, bilang pastor ninyo, marami po kong pagkukulang, marami po kong mga regrets sa mga nakaraang taon ng buhay ko, marami po kong mga inisip ko, sana hindi ko nagawa yun, no? sana hindi ko nasabi ho yun, no? sana itong ginawa ko, sana ito ang sinabi ko, marami po ako yun. But I never lose hope. Bakit to? Dahil pangako ng Diyos na yung sinimulan niyang pagbabago o paggalaw sa aking buhay, pag niya, tatapusin niya eh. No, maaring parang matagal, 
maaring parang wala nagbabago sa buhay mo, pero walang mga segundong dumaan na hindi gumagalaw ang Diyos sa buhay mo. Pahihintulutan niya kung ano-ano pa man na mapahihintulutan niya mangyari sa buhay mo para ikaw ay magmature, para ikaw ay mag-grow. No? Lahat ho yan ay, ay galaw ho ng Diyos. Dahil bakit tayo babaguhin ng Diyos? Bakit tayo may confidence na tayo ay magbabago, maging katulad ni Kristo? Hindi dahil sa katapatan natin. Fluctuating po yung ating katapatan, yung pagmamahal, yung pagsunod natin sa Diyos. Kundi po sa finished work ni Christ 2,000 years ago at sa katapatan ng Diyos sa kanyang mga pangako. At pinangako niya ho sa atin na sinimulan niya tayong galawan pag gaganapin po tayo ng ating Panginoon. Kaya pagdating po ng verse 17 sa ating Colossians chapter 3, ito po ang sinulat ni Pablo. Sabi niya, sorry, ito po sinulat ni Pablo sa verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. That's in verse 17 of Colossians chapter 3. Dahil kayo niligtas ang Panginoon, kayo ay pinatawad ng Diyos, kayo ay binago ng Diyos, kayo ay nakay, nakay Kristo na ngayon, sabi niya, whatever you do, whether in words, salita, or in deed, sabi niya, do it all, gawin mo ang lahat, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Tapos, pagtapos po ng verse 17, yung text na ho natin, about wives, about, fad, about husbands, about children, about fathers. So, bago natin pag-usapan no, yung wives, husbands, children, fathers, bago natin pag-usapan po yun, hindi o children. Yung children po ay uh, plural na. May, may nakita kasi akong sticker, children's of God. Wow, plural na plural. No? So, no? children. Ho, no? So, bago natin pag-usapan no, yung design, yung mandate ng Diyos sa uh, loob ng ating family, isipin natin lagi yung verse 17. Ano yung context? Whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Tatlong bagay pong pinapakita sa atin ng verse na ito. Una, it commanded us to be conscious of Christ in our relationship within our family. Kasi sabi ho ng verse 17, whatever you do, whether in words or in deed. So pag nakikipag-usap ka sa asawa mo, be conscious of Christ. Pagkausap mo ang mga anak mo, be conscious of Christ. Pagkausap mo ang magulang mo, be conscious of Christ. Pagkausap mo, mga kapatid mo, be conscious of Christ. It commands us to be conscious of Christ in our relationship within our family. Why? Whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, yun ang sabi ng verse 17, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pero hindi nagtatapos doon. Sabi rin ng verse 17, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Pakalawang turo po, it reminded us to be grateful for our family as we acknowledge His sovereignty. Now, tingin kayo sa akin, no? sino po sa atin dito, sumagi na sa isip mo o nasabi mo na sa iyong sarili, sana pinanganak ako na ang magulang ko ay Amerikano para matangos ang ilong ko, matangkad at maputi. Hindi ko na kailangan magluto tayo. O kaya, sana hindi sila naging magulang ko. Sana naging magulang ko ito. Mabait, mayaman, at madaling mamatay. <laughs> y- y- yung ganun ho ba? Yung, y- you regret being in this family. Sana hindi itong kapatid ko. O sana hindi itong asawa ko. O sana hindi itong magulang ko. O di kaya mga magulang ka ngayon. Sana hindi itong mga anak ko. Let's be honest. At one point, maaaring nasabi natin yon. Sana naging anak ako ni Henry C. O ni mga Goking Way. O ni Ayala. Di ba? Na- naisip nyo ho ba yun? Na- 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 naisip nyo mga, yung mga bagay pong yon? Now, we should be grateful for our family. The Lord is teaching us, sabi niya, whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. We should be grateful for our family. Hindi ko alam ho eh. Mari ba sa inyo, lumaki kayo na hindi nyo kilala na kilala ang magulang ninyo? Mari ba sa inyo, lumaki kayo sa magulong pamilya? Mari ba sa inyo, lumaki sa squatters area? O mari ba naman sa inyo, lumaki sa mansion? O oh, lumaki kayo na mababait ang pamilya ninyo? Hindi ko alam mo. But we should look 
at our family in the lens of the scriptures. Okay? Naalala ko po nung bata pa si Jam. I don't know kung, kung naalala pa to ni Jam. Sabi ni Jam sa akin, Dad, paano kaya kung naging lawyer kayo? Siguro napakayaman na natin ngayon. Sabi ko naman kay Jam, maari kid. Kasi nakapag-establish sa unang modesty aside, nakapag-establish sa unang pangalan pagdating sa mundo ng abuga siya sa Quezon City at Makati, yung pamilya po namin. Maari. Sabi ko, maari. Pero malamang, ang daddy mo malayo sa Diyos. Di ba? Di ka tulad ngayon, pastor, bagamat hindi naman perfecto, walang malaking pera, walang malaking sweldo, pero nilalapit tayo ng Diyos sa Kanya. Na- naintindihan po ba natin? No? Ma- maring lumaki ka sa pamilyang mahirap lamang, pero nag-uusap-usap kayo ng magulang mo. Sapat napakarami kong kilala ho na mayayamang pamilya ha. Pero bihira ho silang mag-usap. Ni magkita-kita. Bagamat sila po ay nasa loob lamang ng isang malaking tahanan, malaking bahay. So, are we grateful sa ating mga pamilya? Nagpapasalamat ba tayo sa Diyos sa ating pamilya? Bakit to? Kasi dyan po nagsisimula ang lahat. Gawin natin ang lahat in the eyes of, in the consciousness of Christ and, and having a heart of gratitude na Lord, salamat po sa aming pamilya. Kaya nga ho, napakahalaga pag may kinakasal po ako sa aming counseling, no? kinoconsider po yung mga in-laws. Kasi katulad na sinabi ko kanina, yung pakakasalan mong tao, package deal yan, kasama ho yung kanyang pamilya. Package deal ho yan. Dapat ready tayo. Dapat handa ka. Harapin. Kasi package deal ho yan. Once kinasal kayo, no, hindi po nawala ng anak yung mga magulang pag kinasal. Nadagdagan ho ng anak, nadagdagan ng kamag-anakan. Ano ang po natin? Okay? Now, ano po bang design ng Diyos sa ating pamilya? Again, ang pamilya nagsisimula sa mag-asawa. Walang pamilya po na nang hindi nagsimula sa relasyon ng mag-asawa. Kaya pagdating po ng Colossians chapter 3, again, yung verse 17, whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. Pagdating po ng verse 18, ito pong sinabi, Wives, submit to your husband as is fitting to the Lord. Hindi po hiwala yan. Yung verse 17 connected po sa verse 18. Kaya pa nag-aral po tayo ng hermeneutics, no, hindi po hiwala yan. Intention po yan. Actually, ang original manuscript sa Bible, wala po mga chapter number at verse number. Dire-direcho ang sinulat yan sa Greek. Kaya may konektado ho siya. Kaya sabi ng wife, submit to your husband as is fitting to the Lord. Wow! Sa baring sabi ng ibang miss dito, napaka-special naman namin. Kami ang kauna-unahang minensyon ni Paul sa mga sulat niya sa Colossus. Ganun din sa Ephesians. Inuna rin po ang mga misis. Are you proud of it? You should not. You know why? Kung bakit inuna ho ni Pablo ang mga misis, tandaan niyo ho, una hong nagkasala ang babae kesa po ang lalaki. Huwag sana hong sasama ang loob niyo. Dahil yan po ang katotohanan. Kayong mga babae makasalanan. Hindi, <laughs> biro lang ho. Biro lang ho. Una hong nagkasala ang babae, si Eva. Inentertain niya ho si serpent. Tapos so, no, dinominantihan niya si Adan. Let me tell you carefully ho. No? Bakit po inuna ni Paul ang babae sa sulat niya sa Colossus baging sa Epeso? Kasi ho, ang kultura ho ng Colossus po ay they have this, this culture of arrogance. Arrogante. Actually, to be humble means to be less human. Pero niyo yun? Nakita na ho kayo ng taong ubod ng kayabangan. No? Ubod ng kataasan. Miski malito siya, pero parang 10 floor ang taas ng kanyang kayabangan. Nakita na ho kayo ng ganun tao? Hira pong kasama ang mga taong mayabang. Yung mga pasosyal, mga ganun. Ay, hindi ko siya sabi masama maging sosyal. Marami po akong kilalang lumaki talaga sa mayamang pamilya. At talaga sosyal. Hindi dahil nagpapasosyal. Dahil sosyal talaga sila. Bago yung pandemya, yung 
Namimiss ko na yung ice cream sa Japan. Kinabukasan, lilipado sila ng Japan. Yung mga sariling private plane ho. Eh. Tapos pagtapos makabili ng ice cream doon, uwi na sila sa Pilipinas. G- ganun ho kaya yaman. Yung, namimiss ko yung ano, doon sa Malaysia. Punta nga tayo bukas. <laughs> Para lang pumunta ng Kiapo. Ganun. Buhay talaga nila. Eh. Lumaki sila ng mga mayayaman. No? Di ba? Misa nga ako, sino pa yung mayayamang kilala ko? Sila pa yung mga low profile, mapagkumbaba. At kung sino naman yung mga mahihirap na nagayaman-yamanan at pilingera na mayaman, sila pa yung kataas-taasan naman, no? Kulo nila, sambahin mong kataas-taasan Diyos, parang gano'n, no? Yun ang kultura, ho, ng, ng, ano, ng, ng kolosas. No, humility is not even in their vocabulary. And part of their culture is gender equality. Kung ano yung kayang gawin ng lalaki, kayang gawin namin mga babae. Ganyan. Kaya, kaya mapapansin nyo po, sa culture nila, Roman worship nila, meron po silang mga Diyos na lalaki, pero may counterpart po po yun. May mga Diyos na babae. Alam mo natin sa history, right? Pagtapos sumamatay po ni Alexander the Great, na divide po ito four kingdoms or four empires, yung kanyang kaharian, yung, yung uh, Alexandrian Empire, Tapos so, nag-away-away ang nanalo po yung Roman Empire. Kaya dumating po si Jesus, doon po na buo yung Roman Empire. Kaya may mga Greek gods na may mga counterpart na Roman gods. Pero pareho lang rin naman ho yun. No? So, ang sinasabi nila, kami mga babae, kaya rin namin gawin ng mga lalaki. But is that the reality? Oh? Kayo ba mga babae, kaya nung umihi sa poste o sa bakod? Hindi nyo kayang gawin yun. E huwag ka magmamalaki kayong mga lalaki. Tayong mga lalaki. Kaya mo ba magbuntis? Babae na makagagawa yan. Bagamat marami sa atin, kasama ko, mukhang buntis. Lalo pa naka-side view, parang two months yan, di ba? Three months. Iba talaga eh. Though pantay-pantay tayo sa harapan ng Diyos, meron po tayong God-given design, God-given role. Na pagtatayuan po natin, makakaasaw tayo sa blessing ni Lord. Pag hindi tayo natin tatayuan yung God-given design, God-given role, huwag kang umasa na ibibless ka ni Lord. Because God's blessing always flow through the path of His Word, through the path of His Scriptures. At utos so, ang design ng babae sa, ang design ng Diyos sa babae, you need to submit to your husband, bakit po? As is fitting to the Lord. Kaya ba, mga, naranasin nyo ba magsuot ng sapatos na hindi fit sa inyo, masikip sa inyo, pero pinilit nyo isuot, tiis ganda. Comfortable ba? Hindi, di ba? No, ako, I would rather buy a shoe that, that I'm comfortable with. No? Rather than mamahalin o ano pa man, hindi ka comfortable, sobrang sikip. Alam niyo po, you will never feel comfortable in your marriage if you, wife, will not submit to your husband. Ang pangalawang kahulugan po na is fitting to the Lord. This delights and pleases God. Gusto mo bang bigyang kaluguran ng Diyos? Submit to your husband. Totoo lang ho, napakadaling magpa-spiritual sa loob ng church. Involved ka sa ministering ganito, involved ka sa ganyan, be generous, lagi kang evident sa mga magawain ng Panginoon, o sabi na ibang tao, o oh, napaka-spiritual mo. Pero ano ka sa loob ng bahay? I've, I've known some people, huh? they're very active in the church, they're very good in the church ministry, they're very good in the Bible. Pero umuwi ho ng bahay, alas 12, alas 11, alauna ng madaling araw. May asawa, may mga anak. Ang dahilan, nag-fellowship kami sa Starbucks. I don't, I don't think that's being spiritually mature. If you are a wife, you are spiritually mature if you Submit to your husband, support your husband, respect your husband, take care of your kids. These are the signs of godly women, spiritual women. Iba naman, napaka-busy sa church, lahat yata ng ministry, sinalihan. Pagating sa bahay, wala nang time sa asawa, wala nang time sa mga anak, napabayaan ng household chores and everything bilang mother and bilang wife. That's not being spiritual, mga kapatid. Okay? Ganda na sinabi ni John MacArthur. Sabi po niya, contrary to the popular opinion, the most important characteristic of a godly mother is not her relationship with her children. 
it is her love for her husband. The love between husband and wife is the real key to a thriving family. A healthy home environment cannot be built exclusively on the parents' love for their children. The properly situated family has marriage at the center. Families shouldn't revolve around the children. So, kung meron pong loving husband and wife relationship uh, between a husband and wife, there will be loving children. Kung meron pong makajos spiritually na lumalago na mag-asawa, ganun din po ang kanilang mga anak. No? The beauty, the maturity of the family does not rest on children. It rests on your relationship with one another as husband and wife. Kung nakikitaan kayo kung paano kayo nagmamahalan at paano yung love na love si Lord bilang mag-asawa at bilang individual, then the kids will follow. Diba? Kaya nga, misan, dati, ang pag-uwi mo, mister, ang pinapasalubungan mo ng bulaklak at lagi may pasalubong si misis. Nagka-anak na ngayon. Anak na, wala na si misis. Dati, unang inaasikaso ni misis, si mister. Nagkaroon lang ng anak. Hindi na maasikaso si mister. Puro anak na lang. Puro anak na lang. That's wrong. Hindi po yun ang role. Hindi po yun ang design ni Lord sa marriage. Okay? So wives, be very careful with this. Ephesians chapter 5, um, ito pong sinabi po ni Paul sa verse 22 to 25. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Magpapasakop ka, respeto ka, susunod ka sa asawa mo para sa Panginoon. Of course, ang context nito Christian husband. So kung totoong Christian yung husband mo, hindi niya, niya sasabihin sa iyo na, oh, si pare, dito mag-sleep mag, uh, over, tabihan mo. Hindi niya sabihin ng Christian husband yon Hindi niya sabihin ng Christian husband, may, bagamat may mga ganun t- kwento, lalo pag nakapangasawa ka ng mga Koreano. No? Hindi niya sabihin ng isang Christian husband na, uh, honey, trip kong makita kang tumalon mula sa 10th ten, floor na yon Please lang, pasakop ka, talong ka. Ay hindi ko ganun ng totoong mga Christian husband. Okay? Sabi doon, wives, submit your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. You are not wife, you are not the head of, the, of, 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 of your husband. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body and him and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. No? Maraming sabihin ng mga husband, Go, pastor! Preach it, pastor! Don't forget the last verse. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Paano minahal ni, ni, ni Christ ang church? He gave himself up for her. Binigay niyang buhay niya para sa church. Siya sabi niya, like Christ, bigay mo yung buhay mo para sa misis mo. And not the other way. Not the other way around. Now, let's be honest. Ngayon po ay taong 2021 na. Sino po sa atin dito, medyo challenging sa'yo. Medyo challenging sa'yo ang sumun- mag- magpasakop kay mister. Let's be honest. Pagkataas mo ngayon. Medyo struggle ka. Challenge sa'yo na mag submit, magpasakop in everything kay mister. Pakitaas po ang kamay, mga misis. Anyone? Oh, thanks for being, pakitaas nga po uli. Thanks for being honest. Uh, yan. Mer- yung iba, hindi? Hindi, hindi, hindi kayo nahihirapan magpasakop kay mister? Totoo lang. Sige, anyone else? Sino pakitaas nga po ang kamay uli? Yung medyo na sa challenge ka. Ayan. Ayan. Okay, salamat. Tatawain ko na lang yung aking daughter-in-law para Walang sumamalob sa inyo. At least pagkasama kami ng loob, at least magbiyan kami. Okay? So, si, si, si Mira, no? Mira? Mira, pakitayo. Mira. Ayan. Kinakabahan si Mira. Ano ko itatanong ng biyan ko sa akin? Ano ko itatanong ni Pastor? No? Kasi hanggang ngayon, di niya, di niya pa rin ako natatawag na Daddy. Pastor pa rin hanggang ngayon. But I'm not looking forward naman tawagin akong Daddy dahil na, na, nakasanayan eh na tawagin ano. Pero siguro, pag yung misis ko, tinawag ko kong pastor, ha? <laughs> Inakakapagtaka. Anyway, um, what if si Jesus ang mister mo, Mira? Okay? Do you think you will find it hard to submit to Him? 
The answer is no. Right? Do you think Jesus will abuse you? No. Do you think Jesus will be rude to you? No. Do you think Jesus will neglect you? No. Do you think Jesus will be unfaithful with you? No. Do you think Jesus will demean you? No. And do you think you will find it hard to submit to your husband, Jesus? No. Okay? Thank you, Mira. Makaupo ka na. Palapakan po natin si Mira. Okay? Ang, ang, ang point lang po natin dito, husbands, if you will love your wife as Christ loved the church, hindi mo na kailangan i-force pa, oy, sabi ni pastor, sabi ni pastor, gano'n pa yung mga anong malalaki, sabi ni pastor, pasangop ka sa akin. Sa kagamitan pa ng Bible, ito sabi ng Bible. Hindi, hindi mo na kailangan i-press pa eh, yung submission issue eh. No, kasi if you will love your wife as Christ loved the church, you will not be rude to your wife, you will not neglect your wife, you will not be unfaithful with your wife, you will not demean your wife, you will not abuse your wife, then submission will just be a natural uh, flow or a byproduct of such love that you have given to your wife. Tama? Tama po ba? At one point in my life, I failed in this. I regret it. I failed to show to my wife who Christ is. Diba ho? Kaya nga sabi ko ng sumunod na uto sa atin, after the wife, husband sa man, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Please underline that word, do not be harsh with them. The Greek defines this as an exercising your God-ordained authority over your wife with moderating and nourishing influence as Christ loved the church. That's how we should treat our wife. Mo with moderating and nourishing influence. Okay? So the, the word harsh there is not physical. We can be emotionally harsh. We could be mentally harsh. We could, we could be so harsh with our wife. No, halimbawa ho, kinakausap ka ng misis mo, busy ka sa motor mo, sa makina ng kotse mo, o kaya kinakausap ka ni misis, busy ka sa pinapanood mo, o kaya sa work from home mo, o kaya worse, busy ka sa pagkukomputer games mo, MLML ka. Di ba ho? Tapos kinakausap ka ng misis mo, that's being harsh. Do you get the point? Parang sinasabi mo, mas mahalaga itong ginagawa ko kesa sinasa sinasabi mo sa akin. I know a couple or nasira po ang marriage sila dahil busy ho yung lalaki. Sa computer games niya, mas mahalaga pa yung computer games niya. Nakikiusap na yung wife niya, spend time with me in bed. Spend time with me, kwentuhan tayo. Spend time with me and your daughter. Pero inuna niya pa rin yung computer games. One of the main factors, but nagiwalay ho sila ngayon. Sadly, nagiwalay sila. It broke my heart. Because of computer games. Pero mo, maganda ho yung wife na, yung, yung wife na nagsasabi na, Hey, make love with me. E, teka, pagod ako. Come to think of it, sinira mo yung marriage mo because of a computer game? Do you get the point? Naintindihan po ba natin? That's being harsh. Yung wife na gumawa ng initiative. So that you'll spend time with her. That's being harsh. Pinagluto ka ni, ni Mrs. Tapos hindi mo man lang in-appreciate. Sabi mo, kulang pa sa asin, di maalat. Ano ba itong klaseng luto mo? Pag sinasabi mo sa Mrs. mo lagi, hindi ganyan maglaba ang nanay ko, dapat ganito. Hindi ganyan magplancha ang nanay ko, dapat ganito. Hindi ganyan magluto ang nanay ko, dapat ganito. Hintayin mo, nasabihin sa'yo ng misis mo, pakasalan mo ang nanay mo. Goodbye. 
Naintindihan po natin? When we compare our wife to our mom, much more when we compare our wife to our ex-girlfriend, we are being harsh to them. Diba? Na pag tinatawag mo ng iba't ibang title at bansag ang na ang misis mo sa ibang tao, you're being harsh with them. Pag pinagtatawa na mo siya sa mga Bible interpretation niya habang kayo ay nag nagba-Bible sharing, kayo mag-asawa, that's being harsh with them. Husband, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Kaya nga pong warning sa atin ni Pedro, ni Apostle Peter, sa sulat niya po, likewise, sabi niya, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Ano yung understanding way? Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Subukan niyo magbunong braso kayong mag-asawa. Sino man nanalo? Mister. Pag nanalo si misis, baka lalaki ho yan. Nadaya ka, nalin lang ka lang. Kala mo, babae. Sabi doon, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Kikilalani mo, mas mahina ito kaysa sa akin. Pag may mga problema mag-asawa, umiyak yung babae, huwag kang iyak-iyak siyan, huwag kang iyak yung iyak. E weaker vessel nga sila eh. Tutuwa ka ng baril. Anong iyak? iyak? Ikaw ngayon umiyak. Subukan mo. Weaker vessel nga sila. Diba? Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Kaya pa natulog kayong mag-asawa, may kumalabog sa sa uh, sa bahay ninyo, huwag yung... Uy, tignan mo ako sino yun. <laughs> hindi, hindi ika, hindi... Hindi yung mismo nga harap kung magnanakaw man yun o akat bahay gang yun. Hindi yung misis mo. Ikaw ang aharap. Why? Because the Bible says, as Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her. Sa bahay po namin, pag may pumasok ko masamang tao dyan, over my dead body. Patayan kung patayan. Pero hindi ko ahaya ang sakta ng sino pa man ng masamang tao ang asawa at mga anak ko. Patayan kung patayan kami. Hindi dahil I was a former gang leader, kundi tinatayuan ko yung design ni Lord. I am the husband, I am a father, I am the man in the house, and part of my providence sa fa- family ko is to keep them safe. Okay? Sabi doon, to honor the women as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life. Hindi ka, yung, yung blessing ni Lord sa'yo, yung grace ni Lord sa'yo, hindi lang yan para sa'yo, para din yan sa asawa mo. Kaya tinawag ka yung lifetime partner. Kaya kung, kung bakit may she, dahil may he. Kung bakit may he, may she. Kung bakit may husband, may wife. Kung bakit may wife, may husband. Sabi doon, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Makalalaki yan. Are you waiting for your, praying for your promotion? Are you praying na magkaanak? Are you praying na eto mangyari, magkaroon kayong bayit lupa, pero hindi pa rin nangyayari? Bari sinisisi mo wife mo, bari nagtatampo ka sa Diyos, pero in reality, maybe because it's you. You are not treating your wife as the weaker vessel. At please lang naman, mga babae, Huwag naman kami daanin sa iyak-iyak. Misan ganyan eh, pang may gusto. Eh, hindi mo ko love. Hindi mo ko pinila ng Hermes. Okay ka lang? Ano ba, ano, ano ba trabaho ng mister mo? Ano bang sweldo niya? Hermes? Gusto mo Hermes? No? So that your prayers may not be hindered. Nakuha uh, uh, ko na ba kanina? <laughs> Nagugulan ako, third preaching ko na kasi po ito. Ano? Para pong sabi nung Sabi nung, ano, nung uh, years ago, may kinuha sa isang kapatiran natin. Sabi niya, Pastor, in-encourage ko talaga yung aking, ano, yung aking anak. Mag-church ka na uli, anak. Anak, mag-church ka na. Hindi na mga kayo na. Sige, kayo nilang po mag-church. Anak, mag-church ka na uli. Sabi ng nanay, kung, ano, kung sino man yung kinasasama mo ng loob o kinatatampo mo na tao sa loob ng church, kung bakit hindi kayo na nag-church, Eh, huwag kang tumingin sa kanya. Tumingin kay Jesus. 
Mahalaga mag-church ka, mag-church ka para kay Jesus. Hindi maulang na kayo, mag-church ka na, tumingin ka lang kay Jesus. Nasabi, teka nga, sino ba yung taong yun na, kinatit, na, na kinasasama mo ng loob ka, ba di kinag-church? Sabi ng anak, kayo po. <laughs> Siya pala yung nanay, ang dahilan kung ba't hindi na nag-church yung kayo ng mga anak. Then, misang, ganun din tayo, Lord, ang tagal mo na masagutin yung prayer ko. Maybe the Lord is not answering your prayers because you are not treating your wife biblically. You are not nourishing the spirituality of your wife. You are not treating your wife as the weaker vessel. Halimbawa, let me ask you, fellow husbands, do you cherish and honor your wife though you have a higher education than her? Yung mga ganyan eh. Ako tapos ng koleyo, ikaw hindi. Hindi naman usapan dito kung tapos ka o hindi ng koleyo eh. Ang usapan dito, kung kristyano ka, ginagampanan mo ba yung God's design at God's role mo bilang asawa, bilang asawa? Husbands, do you cherish and honor your wife though you are older? Do you cherish and honor your wife though you have a higher salary than your wife? May ganyan eh. Ako ang breadwinner. Ako mas malak sweldo ko. Eh so what? Anong tingin ng Diyos sa marriage mo? Anong tingin ng Diyos sa puso mo? Do you cherish and honor your wife though you are better than your wife? That's a question to all of us. Alam niyo, husband and wife? Kung tinatamaan ka ngayon, salamat, Lord. Ako yun. Kasalanan ko yun. Ako yan, pastor. Lord, ako yan, sinasabi mo ng, ng salita mo. I pray that by His grace, the Lord will flow His uh, power and move our hearts to humility so that we can repent of our sin. If we have failed as a husband, Lord, lead my heart to repentance. If, I fail, if you have failed as a wife, Lord, lead me to repentance. Hindi ko ano-ano pa mga justification ang iniisip mo bagamat kinoconfront ka na ng salita ng Diyos sa araw na ito. Again, John MacArthur once said, the Christian husband displays what he thinks of Christ by the way he treats his wife. So what do you think of Christ, husband? It will show how you treat your wife. John Piper, sabi niya, the ultimate thing we can say about marriage is that it exists for God's glory, that is, it exists to display God. No, hindi, marriage is not just the romantic sense of it. Yung puro kilig to the bones. That's not what marriage is all about. Kaya ang dami nagpe-prepare ng magandang wedding, kilig moments sa wedding, but wedding is not marriage. It is a ceremony. After the wedding ceremony comes marriage. The real life the real husband and wife. Kaya hindi mo nilalagay sa kahihiyan ng asawa mo eh. Tama? No? Wife, you respect your husband. Kung nilagay mo sa pedestal ng kahihiyan ng asawa mo, you are not living to God's design and God's role. And you will only find yourself fighting against God. And husbands, if you don't love your wife as Christ loved the church, marami ka ng justification, hindi, ganito dapat, hindi, ganito dapat. Eh sino ka para kontrahin ang design at ang salita ng Diyos for your marriage? Uud lang ho tayo sa harapan ng Diyos. No, pag isang ganun lang ng Diyos, oh, wala pang sampung segundo. Pag gumano ng Diyos, Niloob niya na tumigil ang tibok ng puso mo, patay ka. Miski wala kang COVID. Miski wala kang sakit. Pag niloob ng Diyos sa patay ka niya ngayon, mamamatay ka. Ano pagmamalaki ho natin sa Diyos? Diba ho? Ang pangatlong utos sa atin about family, sa Colossians chapter 3, verse 20, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Tandaan po natin, disobedience to parents is one of the vices of paganism in the time of the 
people in Colossae. Pinagmamalaki pa ho, dahil because they have this culture of arrogance, pinagmamalaki pa ho ng mga kabataan na sila po ay hindi sumusunod sa kanilang mga magulang. They're proud of it. Kaya again, itong utos na naman po ni Paul sa mga taga-kapatiran sa Colossus, again, it is a counterculture. Sabi niya, na kay Kristo na kayo. Ang kaisipan niyo dapat lagi na kay Kristo. At dahil na kay Kristo na kayo, children, follow what the Scripture says. Don't follow what the culture dictates. Follow what the Scripture says. Ano yung sinasabi ng Bible? Children, obey your parents in everything. Tandaan niyo po, lalo kung kristyano mga magulang ninyo, hindi kayo ipapahamak ng magulang ninyo. Sumunod ho kayo. Alam na ho natin ang mga aral na paulit-ulit. Diba? Ano pong sabi ng nanay na kung saan yung anak ng babae sa UPLB at yung boyfriend nito na nag-aaral din po sa UPLB, nag-celebrate po sila <laughs> ng kanilang mansary, nag-over the back road, nagkita po sa tindahan, nag-iinuman sila ho ng beer, dumating po ang mga bodyguards ni Mayor, dahil birthday ni Mayor, dinamput po sila, pinatay po yung boyfriend, dinamput yung babae, pinangregalo po yung babae kay uh, Mayor, nirape ni Mayor ng ilang beses, tapos so, Binigay niya sa mga bodyguards, ginangray po ng mga bodyguards, tapos so, binaril, tapos tinaapon din sa bangin. <laughs> yung ininterview ho, yung mga magulang. Ano sabi ng nanay? Kung nakinig lang sa aking payo ang aking anak na babae, hindi sana siya nagkaganito. Di ba ho? Kapag sabi ng magulang mo, wag kang uh, anak, wag kang lumabas, pandemya, wag lumabas. Huwag labas ang labas. Okay? Huwag na tayong lumayo dito na lang sa Marulas. A few years ago, may nakitang lumulutang ng katawang babae, ng katawan ng babae. Kitang-kita, dahil maputi yung babae, may tsura yung babae, ho, kabataang babae. Diyan po sa, ano, sa tulay, yung dulo po ng kabitex, tapos baka lumusot ng kawit. Diyan, oh, diyan lang. Sino po nakabalita nun? Taga Marulas din yata yung babae ba? Baka mag-ibigan o kamag-anak. No? Lumulutang-lutang ho. Ano pong sabi ng nanay doon sa news ho? Hindi nagpaalam sa akin ng sa akin, aking anak. Kung nagpaalam lang siya, hindi ko siya papayagan yung gabing yon. Bakit hindi nagpaalam ho? Nakipag-inuman eh sa mga lalaki. Natropa niya. Alam niyo ho, paglasing ka na, walang tropa-tropa. No, at kung demonyo po ang kaisipan ng mga tropa mo, didemonyohin ka talaga. Alam ko, ito ay was a gang leader ho in Quezon City. Lahat ito ng kalokohan ng tropa-tropa, fraternity, gang-gang, alam ko namin ho, kalob-loba noon yan. Miski ba iniinom mo, soft drinks, mirinda. May mirinda pa ba ngayon? Wala, royal true orange yan. Miskin mo mo, Royal True Ores, betsinang ka lang, tulog ka. Pag tulog ka, hindi mo na alam kung anong gagawin sa'yo. Miskin, tropa mo pa sila. Ilan na po ang napahamak, no? nabuntis, na-rape ng mga katropa dahil sa inuman. <laughs> Naintindihan po natin? Ano pong sabi nung ina? Kung nagpaalam lang sana ng anak ko, hindi ko siya pinayagan. Ni-rape na, ginang-rape na, pinagsasaksak pa. Tinapon na parang hayop lang. Nanuwa niyo po ako? Kayong tumayo sa magulang ng batang nun. Oh, pray, prayer ko talaga, Lord. Huwag sana mangyari to sa anak kong babae, sa, kahit sa anak kong babae. Sabi ko, Lord, kilalang kilala mo ako. Alam mo ang aking nakaraan, alam mo ang aking kahinaan. Lord, Mangyari man yun kung pahihintulutan mo, Lord, maluwalhati pa rin kita. Pero Lord, please, huwag ito mangyari sa anak ko. Naitindan po natin. Kaya when, the, when your parents say, uwi ng maaga, uwi ng maaga. Hindi po maaga na. Uwi ng maaga. Kasi maaring safe sila doon sa bahay na pinuntahan nila, pero yung daan na kanilang, yung pag-uwi nila, yung dadaanan nilang kaliho, hindi natin na titiyak. Miski nakakotsi pa ho yan. Di ba ho? Eh, paano kung may truck driver lasing at binangga yung kotse ng anak mo? 
Kaya nga po sabi ng Ephesians, when we obey our parents, may dalawang pangako po, mahabang buhay at masaganang buhay. Mahabang buhay at masaganang buhay. That's why obey your parents. Pag sinabi ng magulang mo, anak, huwag kang magdadala rito ng lalaki at papakilala mo, boyfriend mo na, nang hindi man lang nagpaalam sa amin o hindi man lang, hindi man lang umakit ng ligaw. Sumunod kayo ng gusto ng magulang mo eh. O kaya anak, huwag kang magdadala rito ng babae na girlfriend mo na, na hindi mo man lang niligawan, hindi ka man lang nagpaalam sa amin. Lalo tigit, anak, huwag kang magdadala rito ng babae na sabi mo, may apo ka na. May apo na ho kayo. Ganun ho talaga. Children, obey your parents in everything. For this pleases the Lord. Kasi kung totoong Christian ka, kung totoong Christian ho tayo, wala na ang pinakamasaya sa, na, na, na kalagayan ng ating puso, kundi nabibigyan natin ng kaluguran ng Diyos. Tama. Kaya kung meron po tayong kalagayan ngayon na hindi nalulugod ng Diyos, nagsisisi tayo at Lord, tulungan mo ayusin ko ang buhay ko, paayos ko Lord ang buhay ko sa iyo dahil hindi ko kaya itong mag-isa at malugod ka sa aming kalagayan. Malapit akong dumating si Lord. Totoo lang mga kapatid. No, huwag po tayong matagpuan ng Diyos na nasa gitna tayo ng pagkakasala. Ang mga dapat ayusin, ayusin. Ang dapat pagisihan, pagsisihan. Ang dapat talikuran, talikuran. Ang dapat bitawan, bitawan. And let us pursue to please God kasi yan po ang ultimate goal natin to glorify God and to please God. Last instruction po is verse 21. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Again, I'm guilty of this in the earliest part of my life as a father. Huwag po natin bigyan ng sama ng loob ang ating mga anak or they will become discouraged. Ano po ibig sabihin po ng verse na ito? Fathers are encouraged to make an atmosphere of love and confidence inside the home so that peace and obedience will just be a natural byproduct. Minsan hindi masaya, mapayapang pamilya. Alam niyo ba hindi masaya? Si tatay kasi, busy ako sa trabaho. Si nanay naman, busy ako sa gawain bahay. When was the last time umupo ka sa mga anak mo? Ano ba yung pinapanood mo sa Netflix? At nakinood ka. O di kaya may nilapit sa yung anak mo, Dad, Ma'am, ito pangarap ko. Gito, ganito, ganyan, 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 ganyan. Time will come, I believe, pagayamanin ako ng Panginoon. At sabi mo, do it, anak. Kaya ni Lord yan. Pag kalooban ni Lord, tutulungan ka ni Lord yan. Anak, nangarap ka, pandemya, nangarap ka. May mga ganong magulang, eh, neg, neg. No? Misa may mga magulang ko na exaggerated. Sinabi lang, ah, uh, <laughs> Tay, ito po ang girlfriend ko. Buntis na yan? Bilang mo, pinapakilala na girlfriend, buntis ka agad? Para bang, hello. Do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Ayaw po natin yan. Tandaan po natin, happiness in marriage and happiness inside the family is a matter of choice. And children spells love in four letters. T-I-M-E. Totoo lang ho, wala po ang kahiligilig sa Korea novela. Pero one time, nakikita ko yung, yung pandemya ho, nakikita ko yung asawa at mga anak ko, may pinapanood sila, parang enjoy na enjoy sila. May ginawa ko one time, tumabi ko, ano ba yung pinapanood ninyo? <laughs> ano ba ang kwento niyan? Eh ayoko rin yung, nagba- yung iba lingway, tapos binabasa mo yung, ano ba, subtitle ba tawag doon? <laughs> Pagtagal-tagal, aba, bakit nagkaganon? Eh sino ba sila? Mga may sabi ko, tapusin na natin to. <laughs> anong anong movie 'yan? Yung nahulog sa North Korea. Pa para sa itong babae, ha? Oh, crash landing. Ang ganda pala, sakita ko abang nanonood kami lahat, lalo pati misis ko na sila sama ko sa manood niyon. Nakita ko masaya sila. No, masaya akong pinapanood yung crash landing, pero mas masaya ako nakikita na masaya sila na nandoon ako kasama nila nanonood kami ng crash landing. 
Do you get the point? It's a matter of choice. Kung ikaw yung typical na magulang, pagising pa lang sa mga, tulog pa yung anak mo, oy, gising, gising. Ba't pa ito ginawa? Ano pa ito? Ano pa ito? So bago matulog sa gabi, bago matulog, share mo na naman, share mo na naman. Eh, wala akong mangyayari. Wala kang karapatan na magbuhos ang disiplina sa anak mo kung hindi mo sila binuhusan muna ng pagmamahal. One of the reasons in the Philippines kung bakit ito lumalaking rebelde ang mga anak is this factor, parental absentee. Kaya nga in this church, ever since in this church, tinuturo ho namin lagi, sige, mag-abroad ka na mag-abroad, mag-abroad ka na mag-abroad habang bata pa ang anak mo. Pero pagdating rin ng teenager, stop. Spend time with them. Because these are the years that they need you. They need a fatherly advice. They need a motherly advice. Yan yung po yung mga time na yan. So, I hope you're getting the point. <laughs> Please do not embitter your children. Huwag silang magkaroon ng tanim na sama ng loob. Listen carefully. I'll close with this. Matapos sa tayo. No? Children will hear what they hear, but they will do what they see. I'll say this again. Children will hear what they hear, but they will do what they see. Again, Verse 21 addresses to the fathers. Mga tatay! No, hindi ho paging lalaki yung marunong ka uminom ng alak, marunong ka umawak ng barel, matapang ka, hindi ka takot sa ipis at daga. Hindi pa na paging tatay ho. Ang paging tatay ho sa harapan ng Diyos, marunong kang tumayo sa God-given role and design ni Lord sa iyo. Allow me to use this word. Just today. Maraming tatay ho, bakla. Bakit bakla? Kasi hindi kayang tayuan ang role ng Diyos na binigay ng Diyos sa kanila. It is our role to discipline our kids. It is our role to provide for our family. It is our role no, to be a model to our family, to our wife. It is our role to lead the family ho, to godliness and to the design of God towards family. Takot tayo eh sa anak. Takot tayo sa asawa. We should not be. No, if we, if we love our wife as Christ loved the church, if we love our children as the Father loves us, His children, we should not be afraid. To exercise our God-given, God-ordained authority. Because we exercise it in, with, the, with, 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 with a sense of the knowledge of Christ. Na mag-glorify si Christ, hindi yung diktador. Kundi serving. Serving our wife and serving our kids. Tayo ano natin? Yan ang pagiging lalaki sa harapan ng Diyos. Hindi yung disiplinahin mo. Oh. Oy, Han, babe, o ano man tawag mo si Miso, disiplinahin mo yan, disiplinahin mo yan, anak mo yan. No, we discipline them. The wife supports us. We lead them in prayer. We remind them kung nagde-devotion pa rin po sila. We are pastors of our family. Wake up, guys. God will hold you accountable the way you handle your family because you are pastors of your family. Again, I would like to say that children will hear what they hear, but they will do what they see. Pag sabi mo, anak, magbasa ka ng Bible, pero hindi man nila nakikita nagbabasa ka ng Bible. People, children will hear what they hear, but they will do what they see. Pero pag nakikita ng mga anak mo na Si daddy, tuwing umaga gising, nagbabasa ng Bible. Si mommy, pag tuwing umaga gising, umaga nagigisa, nagpe-pray. Pag nagbabasa sila ng Bible, parang enjoy na enjoy sila. May mga highlight, highlight pa sila. May mga journal sila. At they spend an hour or two with God through His Word and prayer. nag enjoy There's something sa ginagawa ng daddy at mommy ko. Why they spend an hour or two with God every morning? And soon, you will, you, your children will also follow your example. O nga no, 
Sabi ng mga anak natin, o oh, nga, ganda talaga ng Bible. Sarap pag-usapan ng Bible. Okay? Children will hear what they hear, but they will do what they see. So kung paano mo minamahal ang misis mo, kung paano ka nagpapasakop at sumusuporta, rumerespeto kay mister mo, pag nakita ko ng mga anak natin yon, they will do what they see. Kung nakita ng mga anak mo that church worship, going to church worship is important, makikita nila yan. They will do that. Oh, kay mami nga, kay daddy, mas mahalaga ang church. Ano mga appointments, mas mahalaga ang church. Because children will hear what they hear, but they will do what they see. They will do what they see. Let me close with three quotes. No, yung dalawang quotes po, nag-quote ay buhay pa. Yung isa naman no, ay na kay Lord na. One, sabi ni Paul Washer, your children will go to public school and they will be trained for summer around 15,000 hours in ungodly secular thought. And then they'll go to Sunday school and they'll color a picture of Noah's Ark and you think that's going to stand against the lies that they are being told? It's true. It's true. Diba ha? Sage Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon, sabi niya, if we never have headaches through rebuking our children, we shall have plenty of heartaches, excuse me, when they grow up. Oh, ang mga anak ko namin, no, babad na babad sa rebuke, paalala, correction. Pinapagalitan, dinidisiplina po namin. There comes a time, yung nag-aaral po sila, pagdating ng 9 o'clock, lahat ng cellphone, surrender po yan. May lalagyan ho kami. Para kinabukasan, fresh ang kaisipan nila, makapag-aral sila na mabuti. And I'm not afraid with them. Siya sabi ko sa kanila, if you cannot follow our rules here, biblical rules, the door is open for you. Okay? Wala, ang daming magulang takot sa anak. Why? If you really love your kids, you should not be afraid with them. You should learn to exercise care frontation, not confrontation. Care frontation. You need to confront them. What's going on, anak? You don't do this. Why are you doing this? No, it will be painful moments. Every time we rebuke, we reprimand, every time we correct them, we discipline them. It's a, those are painful moments, even to our hearts. But we should do what the Bible says. We should exercise our God-ordained authority as parents. Hindi o nagkakamali ang salita ng Diyos. Pag ginawa natin ang kanyang kalooban. Last but not the least, <laughs> po, is uh, through Pastor Vodic, Dr. Vodic Bocham. Uh, siya po isa sa mga respected, reformed, theologian pastor in America right now, Reverend Vodic Bocham. Um, black American po ito. Sabi niya, if I teach my son to keep his eye on the ball, alin po sa Amerika, ano eh, uh, pride ng isang magulang na marunong mag-catch ng baseball yung kanilang anak. If I teach my son to keep his eye on the ball, but fail to teach him to keep his eye on Christ, I have failed as a father. These are very strong words. But it's true. But fail to teach him to keep his eye on Christ. Sabi niya, I have failed as a father. That's why the challenge for all of us, husbands, wives, children, fathers, are we exercising the God-ordained roles that He has given to us? Because that is the only way for us to experience the fulfillment of His promises, both in our marriages and also in the future of our kids and at the end of our family. 
Shall we all pray? Nalangin po tayo. Oh, have mercy on us, Lord. I pray, oh God, that this will not just be another Sunday, another sermon, another dedication service, Lord. For as we mirror in your word today, God, that the word that was preached to us this morning, oh Father, forgive us all our frailties, shortcomings, being a husband or being a wife or being parents or being children, oh God. Oh Lord, forgive us, we pray. And help us by the power of your grace and of the Holy Spirit to stand, O oh God, on the roles that you have given to us. That indeed our family will have a godly future for the year 2021. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Speak to our hearts. All arise, then let's wait my By this time, we would like, uh, please listen carefully to this instruction. We're still observing the uh, social distancing.